Hello everyone, I'm Anne from Lolly and Grace and welcome to this tutorial for the Daisy Stitch. The Daisy Stitch is another one of those most basic of stitches that has many, many uses. For instance, you can see it here. Here is a Daisy Stitch that has just a little single stitch, a little straight stitch inside of it of a different color for like a little bitty leaf. Here is a larger daisy stitch. These six right here are larger daisy stitches that have a bullion stitch inside of it. Then you've got a situation like this where each of these leaves is made up a series of longer daisy stitches. These each have also have a different colored little straight stitch in the, in the center of it. But you can see when they're all stacked up like this, instead of being individual leaves together, they all create one big fern leaf. So many, many things you can do with the daisy stitch. So let's get right to how to create this stitch. The daisy stitch is essentially like a, a teardrop shaped stitch and you can change that shape a little bit according to how you sort of manipulate it. But um, I also want to inject here that sometimes the daisy stitch is also referred to as a detached chain stitch because a chain stitch is made up of a line of connected daisy stitches. But I just call it the daisy stitch and um, I use it very often. So when I say a teardrop, what I mean is it's basically a little teardrop shape like that. So how do we create it? All right, I've got my needle and thread here. You're going to come up at this point and then go back down in the same exact spot. All right, but do not pull the thread all the way through. You want to leave a loop like that. Then you want to come up with your needle at the top of that teardrop inside the loop. Bring your needle up, pull until you form that teardrop. To finish the stitch, you're going to go over the top of that shape and make one little anchoring stitch like that. So let's do that again. This time I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. So let's do that again. I'm going to come up. Then I'm going to take the needle down exactly where I came up. Hold a loop of thread open. And then at the top of that stitch, come up through the loop, pull the thread and form that teardrop and then make one little anchoring stitch over the top like that. One more time. Up, down in the same spot, hold open a loop, come up inside that loop and pull the thread until the loop forms and make a stitch at the top. So here are a couple of things that uh, sort of to know about the daisy stitch. Um, I am doing what's called the stab method where you go up in one motion with your needle and down with another motion and up each one is a separate motion. There's also the sewing motion with the daisy stitch and sometimes that makes it a little bit easier to get the right tension because the, the tension on a daisy stitch is sometimes a little bit wonky because you've got this teardrop formed. All right, so let me show you. My fabric is pretty tight and it is harder to do the sewing method on really, really tight fabric, but let me see if I can do it. So I have come up, now I'm going to Put the tip of the needle back down where it goes in, but instead of taking it all the way through, I'm going to push up from the back and leave my needle like that. So now I can take this thread, I'm pushing up on the needle a little bit, so I raise the tip and I'm going to wrap that thread around it so it catches underneath, and now I can pull the needle through 
and that forms a little teardrop. Again, so it's kind of your preference. I generally tend to do the stab method because you can see that one didn't turn out so great. Looking at these, it's obvious to see the variation you can get just in how tall you make the stitch or in how hard you pull the thread. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to make sort of a little short squatty, a little more rounder daisy stitch like that. And I'm going to do that by not pulling the thread too much. Right? I didn't pull, pull it so much that it, it pulled it really skinny. Now I will do a thinner, more narrow daisy stitch. In fact, I'll make it this, try to make it the same height. Okay, but now this time, and here's another hint about the daisy stitch. When I'm pulling this thread, instead of pulling it up, like straight up towards you, I tend to pull it that direction. I pull it a little bit flat against the fabric and that helps to keep that loop that's going to form kind of in line a little bit. So I'm going to pull that, but now this time I'm going to pull pretty hard. So I pulled quite a bit there. I know that thread's getting a little bit lighter color because it's a variegated thread, but you can hopefully see the difference in this rounder daisy stitch and this skinnier daisy stitch. You can make them very long and skinny like that. Okay, that makes great fun kind of like I showed you before, you could do individual ones like that for like a fern leaf or something like that. It makes great flower petals. Uh, many, many uses for the daisy stitch, like I said. And before I wrap up this tutorial, let me just do two little quick troubleshooting things that can sometimes happen with daisy stitches. One of them is that the tension on the threads, it happened a little bit here, but the tension on the threads can end up being a little bit um, different and you know it can happen more as you stitch more and more um, this is a I'm using three strands here and you know just my luck I won't be able to get it to happen but sometimes when you if you pull that see it didn't happen but what can happen is that like one of these threads can get a little bit different can be pulled um, not the same as the others see how that one so when that happens as I'm pulling the thread before I pull it tight you know if you just keep pulling on this one that thread is not ever going to get into line so what you have to do is go up here and just gently separate each one and pull on it and I'll what do you know for once never happens the first one I choose is the one that is um, the one that's loose. So let's say, for instance, I had chosen this one first. If I pull on it, it's not really helping. If I pull on this middle one, it kind of gets that one in line. And then if I pull on the, this one, the magic one, if I pull on it, see how it pulled it into line. Now it's still a little bit loose. Yeah, see, kind of lost it there. Oh, see, that one's kind of lost. All right, let's just try again. That works. That one got really messed up. So let's just try again. All right, that one's a little bit better, but like I said, all you need to do is just separate the, the strands and try to find the one that's out of place. And if you just gently pull it back in line, your daisy stitch will look great again. The other thing that can happen is as you continue to stitch with uh, stitch more and more if you do like a whole bunch of daisy stitches in a row your thread gets a little bit I don't know kind of wound together again and so this is a good stitch for uh, as you stitch longer and longer or do more daisy stitches is to let that thread underneath hang and I know you can't see it in here because I can't hold it up high enough but you know take your hoop and just let the thread hang and so that that thread will unwind 
because it gets a little bit twisted up. And that's, but other than that, those are kind of the two main things that can happen. And so really simple fixes for both of those. So there you go. There is the very versatile, very basic, very wonderful daisy stitch.